Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the letter H, one of your commentators for today for week seven of NECC, where today we are going to be seeing Butler and Central Methodist 2, their second team playing in as, the, as their first team plays in the next round. As I already said, I am the letter H, and this is my co-commentator, Caro. Hello, and this, this game is going to be starting off on Villa for the first map of the day. And Villa itself, I feel personally, is a little bit more roam heavy because there's three sets of staircases set off in the entire map. A little bit more horizontal. It's not like Cafe where they have three different layers of floors, but I can definitely say it's still pretty roam heavy. But Villa itself, what do you think about Villa? I want to pick your brain on that a little bit more. I see a lot less vertical play specifically. I agree really heavily with your horizontal strategies because of the fact that all of the primary sites that are held are on the second floor, so vertical is no longer a problem. So to go into that and to build more onto that for the ban, uh, for the good old fashioned ban predictions, I'm not going to. I'm thinking we won't be seeing a cage, which we usually do on a lot of other maps in order to lock down certain vertical things, since Villa isn't as vertical heavy and is a lot more roam heavy and horizontally just flat. <laughs> yeah, and when it comes to the defending picks, especially on this map. I will expect an Intel operator, either Maestro, Valkyrie. Those are the expected ones on the defense. When it comes to the offense, you always expect some sort of hard breach. And then the roam clear right there, I was about to mention that. As I said, this map is very roam heavy. You expect the Jackal pick. The Jackal pick, the Thatcher is going to be slowing down the attackers a lot because that is going to be a lot of Intel save because those grenades can be pretty impactful for the defenders. And yeah, Intel is probably going to be the next pick when it comes to the uh, ban phases. And as we are going into that intel, we have Mira, who is a much more active intel source with her windows that are both bulletproof and you can see through them. And they allow for a much more active hold rather than, in my opinion, cameras ha offer a much more passive hold. While you do know where they are, you don't have someone physically there with a gun in order to defend themselves and defend the point. And we're seeing oh. a clash ban today. Hmm. Hey, it fits um... my predictions with no Cade. <laughs> yeah, I, I was expecting a camera, just one of the cameras to be off the board, but the mirror, I can expect that. The mirror is definitely someone I would see to get off the board because of how impactful she is and how she can actually just lock down an entire entry point just by herself if played correctly and in the right hands. But, oh, look, there's the cap can pick we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I am we were, already excited. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about how uh, one of these teams actually chose cap can at one point. And, well, there, there's the Capcom pick right there that we're going to be waiting for. And hopefully they can actually counter him properly because that's I'm excited to see how they counter him and if they even know how to counter him because the last team that, that played against him wasn't, wasn't so effective. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of deaths coming in from that said Capcom and ended up paying mad dividends for the defending side. And we're having Smoke 6 picked out into Jaeger, probably much more depending on the Capcan to slow down the enemy rather than the solid instant 30 seconds of locking down a whole choke point. They're probably hoping for a much more scare tactics heavy strategy since uh, Capcan Strap is much more passive, is much more passively done rather than smokes. I need to chuck it and then actually detonate it myself. They just kind of run into it and potentially much more likely get a kill. Yeah, and I realized that they ran two operators that based themselves off of roam denial or just roam clear in general. They had a Nomad and they had a Gridlock, but then the Nomad got switched off to an IQ, which is entirely expected if they saw the Capcan on board and they saw the Lucy, the Valkams, you would want to bring an IQ. So this that's an entirely fine that's entirely fine, but I would expect them to switch off the Gridlock personally. Gridlock, yes, she does bring a lot of utility to the board. She brings those smokes. Her her tracks are pretty useful as well. Her gun is pretty flawless i feel personally but i i feel like they, they should have just stuck the nomad I, I i'm not a huge fan about that switch i feel like they're trying not to overlap over each other very constantly so you have gridlock and nomad kind of their primary roles are overlapping with each other so they're trying mm -hmm. to diversify all of their team as much as they can to try to cover as much things that, that the defending team can throw at them rather than just being doubly good at clearing out the roam which i'm not fully certain if CMU over here is a roam heavy team because I found it does depend on the team oh yeah it definitely does but having that Capcan, having that Jaeger having that Malusi those are three roamers that have to that all they have to do is just throw down their primary gadget and then they can just roam as they as they please so as you can see right now Silver Fox is downstairs ready to deal with some sort of vertical push as you can see the IQ is dealing with a little bit from below on such how to take care of that utility below doing her job pretty well and that's actually going to be the first pick onto Zofia. Ooh. As I mentioned before, that roam is going to be killer, and they clearly weren't expecting it, and there's not going to be an instant refrag, and they need to take care of that as soon as they can. 
especially with the Zafir, that is a very strong pick for them to have, because now you only have your ace for your primary breaching capabilities, rather than Zafir's uh, much better used soft uh, soft breach grenades in her impacts, and also the concussions that you have. Bonbon bon just not <laughs> finding the shot here on this one. Gadget pulling out the big one, trying to see if we can get it. I don't think it's paying anything off. Ratfink over here also trying to push into study, just camming everyone out. Generally, they are getting close to the point, but they haven't quite pushed fully on while we have uh, hit our last minute of our match. Yeah, and there's a lot of time being wasted downstairs from this IQ. The gadgets just so trying to be take care of it. <laughs> he's just done with the situation right now. He's brought up the LMG to hit what he still can, but he hasn't realized that the position that it's in, you just can't deal with it, and he just has to move on while he still can and just help with this roam. As you can see right here, the, I the oh. Ayana, rather, is re yeah, he's aware of it. He takes care of the nade. That's perfectly played. That's that trade going through, but as you can see, the timer's counting down, and there's only been one trade so far. And that is that one trade that is great, and, we're, and it's awesome to see it pop off with a grenade. Are we going to be seeing a second one going through? Jaeger instantly saves our unlucky soul who was caught in between a bit of a rock and a hard place, which is almost a rock and explosive. The attacking team is slowly pushing in, slowly collapsing in while we hit our 25 second mark. They have plenty of time to push onto the point with what they have. Swolverine getting taken down by Bon Bon. Bon Bon getting refragged instantly by Omega Wolf with Raikai if that's how you pronounce that, evening it out to a three to two Butler favor as we hit our 15 to 10 second mark. Everyone's going in, bullets are flying, everyone's dying. Two v one as we see a calf can kill as we were talking about earlier. As we get down to our one v one, four seconds left on the clock and it Aww. is a defense sided round. Surprisingly, I was figuring that we were gonna be seeing the attacking side end up winning, especially after that calf can trap because I figured we would see a lot more hesitation with that calf can kill or at least we'd be called out there, there would be more cap cans on the site, but we ended up not seeing that. How did you think that round ended out for you, Caro? Yeah, most of it was based around just gunfights at that point. They barely had any sort of eyes on site. The intel didn't really translate until that last like 50 second push. So they dealt with the Jaeger and then they had to move straight into site. They didn't, they didn't have time to drone, so they just had to worry about winning their gunfights, and clearly the defensive side was on top. It was pretty even, though. Their trades went out pretty well. The cap gun trap was the, the last person to pick up that kill. If that cap gun trap wasn't there, it would have left that defender in the 1v2 situation. He did win the gunfight. The Malusi, rather, did win the gunfight onto the gridlock, which actually did win out the round, but you have to say that the cap gun trap was the reason why they won that. And that being said, speaking of the cap gun traps, he kept them close to sight to make sure that in that last second situation that they, they set themselves in, it, there would be pretty impactful. And as you did see, that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Capcan is one who punishes really heavily for rushing. And if you get that enemy into the beautiful, delicious 20 second time mark that you hear flying all about when talking about how to play rainbow or whatever, if you, the defenders can get those attackers into that 20 second time mark where they have no more time to really clear out all the gadgets, you, Capcan is the strongest in that kind of situation. And I am also going to ask you, do you remember if it was uh, Butler or CMU that ended up banning Clash? Uh, well, okay, so it's start. who, who starts with the, the the first ban is the defending side, correct? Yes. CMU, CMU banned Clash. Yeah, yeah, CMU, just okay. our production actually just alerted us that CMU banned Clash. And okay. that being said, since they're on the defensive side, the Clash as well, I don't really expect too many, uh, a Clash pick on the site. I haven't really seen too much of that play. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been sticking to Cash a lot recently, so I can't really say much about that. But still, <laughs> just non nonetheless, through competitive matches, I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of that ban. But speaking of operators in general, I want to bring up the Ayana. The fact that yeah. they did bring in Ayana is is a new thing because she has been buffed recently, but a lot of people haven't been using her G36. Either way, she is still a very effective operator. The utility that she does bring to the table is immense. She bring Her main gadget is heavy intel throughout the entire round. It's unlimited until the round ends. She brings nades and smokes. You can pick either one. Her guns are pretty effective as well. And actually, speaking of the G360, I actually did not realize, but she is bringing it right now. So the fact that that is being brought to the table is pretty interesting, and I actually can't wait to see how well it plays in this competitive match. I feel like it will play very, very well, and they are, and they need to properly utilize their Ayana a little bit more. I don't know if we saw a lot of usage from said Ayana in that previous round, and that might be one of their big downfalls. We're seeing Zafia get downed over here, but I think she should be able to get herself up sometime oh, soon. She, uh, no, she's not going to try. She's just going to no, be waiting no, for someone. Do to you not remember the nerf? The nerf went through. She did no longer can do that. Oh! Yeah, the withstand has been taken away. She can no longer up herself, so she needs to have a teammate. She, as you can see right there, she did get up, and I was actually hoping that she did not die right off the bat, because last round she did, and as you can see right here, this is the exact 
this is exactly what we were waiting for that to go through. And the Muzi gadget doesn't trigger it either, so that's actually pretty interesting. So the audio call doesn't go out for well, actually, well, rather that the Ayana going through is enough call out enough already. So they're gonna have a little bit of support on the on the south side of the room, and the minute counting down right now might be huge because they have not gotten a single kill yet. Neither team has, so this is gonna be interesting. They just have to win their gunfights once again. It's just gonna be a repeat from last round. We are seeing a lot of angry stares happening going back and forth across each team as we hit our minute mark and our first two kills of the round one right after the other hitting a third one from omega wolf and then a fourth one coming in from pepperoni cmu already has the mad advantage coming in at a four to two at around the 30 second mark as raikai and big chi try to push into the site the best that they can getting a lot of sound from that barbed wire is going to be the death to our Malusi and Pepperoni with the final kill on our Ayana in that main entryway. I feel like we did see more of the Ayana use to try to spot out more gadgets, uh, but I feel like that that was just a really hard point for them to push into, especially with the picks that they had for the defending side with the Cade and the Capcan and all the other just very passive holds that they have. A much more like just, we're going to let the gadgets do their job, and once their job is done, we'll do our job. Yeah, and it's like I said, it was a repeat from last round. The IQ took way too long to clear out, and not only the IQ, because it was work going through vertically. It was another map that was on the second floor, so she could have went below and dealt with those that utility through the floor. But every other operator, when it came to that room clear, it took way too long. It brought it back down to the minute countdown, and they had no kills on the board, meaning that if the, if the utility that they brought, they have plenty of utility. The Ayana could have been clearing site with no problem. Or not clearing site, but just clearing the offsite and taking that map control while they still had to had the time to. But that being said, they need to start picking it up. The Ayana, the only time we ever saw the Ayana being used, or rather the Gemini being used, was when they were right next to site. And that's when the minute countdown was starting. So they need to start cleaning up their roam clear. They need to start speeding it up. Drones need to be going through so they have a better understanding of how the map is being laid out, and then they can just start moving in from there. And I think that's just mostly map knowledge. You need to know where your drones are good. You need to know all the cheeky hiding spots where they won't instantly die. So that way you can get all the information that you can out of them, because in theory, the longer that drone is alive, the more information it will provide. And along with that, you need to much more properly utilize uh, your assets, or in this case, your operators, when it comes to both roam clear and pushing in. You typically want to try to have one person specifically on the roam clear, and that is their only worry in life. And until that roamer is dead, that's all they're worried about. And in this case, we saw the sixth pick from Nomad into Gridlock. Gridlock being a much more active roam clear, while Nomad is just able to lock off full hallways, and it'll still work out. And we're only packing one additional Claymore on our IQ to also have much more of that passive hallway denial for our roamer. Yeah, and I haven't really noticed it before, but did they bring a Mozzie last round? They did not bring a Mozzie last round. We are getting the Mozzie this round. It is a new is it... one. We're seeing both Australians. Oh, yeah, you're right. And I was gonna, I was questioning it because I could understand a little bit of droning on site if there was Mozzies in place or just the Mozzie pest in place. But yeah, right here, this is where I want to see it go through. They actually took, they took a lot of map control this time. They don't have much to actually cut off the rotations. It seems like no track stingers have been set down. So they're just going to be making a straight push onto site. As you can see right here, Big Cheese is not going to be hesitating. Pick up the first kill into Wolverine, but it's going to be traded instantly. Omega Wolf's going to be taking care of Big Chi with that pistol shot. And that will mind being taken down. That's a lot of magnets off the board because, as you, as you know, it takes care of that timer to be able to actually throw down your magnets. So that being off the board, that's going to be a lot of utility saved and a lot of grenades that can actually be put into use now. Mm -hmm. They seem to be trapped over here in the main living room, just kind of trying to figure out how to attack their site using everything that they have at their disposal, which is great to see. We're still not seeing anything locked off, and as I say that, we're locking off <laughs> that top staircase, but there are still more staircases, and you can go down the main one and still probably get a lot of leeway in, and I don't know if they'll be expecting that. I feel like they might just lock it down, and then from there, they're just not expecting any roam to be there or if the Rome will just figure that out and then go down the main stairs, if they even still have one, at our four to four as we hit our minute mark, as we're seeing a little bit more aggressive pushing coming in after gadgets have been taken out. Yeah, the gridlock going downstairs for Rome clear when there's a minute counting down was not the move. As you can see right here, Pepperoni actually does manage to pick up a kill under the Mozzie, so that actually could have been the move because they're still playing that vertical and then everything's Ooh. just unwinding right now. Yeah, and then it is a whirlwind heist as I have called it in the past, we saw 
orange almost die instantaneously. They just kind of melted like ice cream in the hot sun, and just something happened. They somehow got in, and granted, this is the tertiary site, so I feel like they're not thinking too hard about it. It is a site that is much harder to hold on Villa, and it is a site that is expected, that is only there for if you won your first two rounds. Uh, you don't typically hold that site very aggressively or as effectively as you do on either astronomy or map room and study. Yeah, what I feel like they should have done is because they needed to be aware of the fact that they take a while for the room clear. That that time, they didn't really do much besides the fact that the IQ just went up above, cleared out that mozzie, and that's all they really did besides the Ayana playing very aggressive on site, which was successful, but the trade went through right away. So mm -hmm. the only kill that actually went in their favor from the upstairs before that last initial push to actually take site was the mozzie upstairs. And that being said, it was, a, again, minute countdown when they started getting crap done. So since they were upstairs already doing that in a minute, they need to make it be aware that the droning and the intel, they're lacking. They're lacking that department. And the fact that they are not taking advantage of the fact that they need to start working more on roamers because they are very inconsistent of how they're doing it. So I would say personally for them, I would start working a little bit more on the roaming. Try to add as much pressure as you can to where they have to work off that final gunfight. And then obviously you just have to win your gunfights from there. And that's typically what it ends up boiling down to. You just end up having to win your gunfights within the last minute because the first two minutes are always spent getting into the building and from there gathering the intel you need to make the final minute push work to make it just have them able to even look at the site and then be able to take it. And we're seeing almost everyone spawn on like that far eastern side rather than on the southern side. You'd probably see much more likely on the site that they are currently on. So we're going to be seeing a much more horizontal play i'm going to assume and a much more split push coming in rather than all of them trying to push in from ruins side they're all going to be trying to push in from every single window and to try to first catch that roamer hopefully just the slightest bit quicker at least to get more time to figure out where they're at and to figure out how to push into the site as aggressively as they did hopefully last round because the aggression worked out really well in their favor yeah, of course. And having both of the Rome Denial now is going to be huge because they can lock it off instead of actually having to worry and, and try to push site, or rather not push site, but push the off sites and try to take off the Romers yourself. You can actually just lock it off and then get the audio call when they try to rotate down and hopefully just not get taken care of from a vertical angle. As you see right here, Big Chief playing solo, waiting for the gridlock to slowly push his way in. I think that's exactly what he's going to be waiting for. So him actually going to be pushing in like this. He's going to be trying to take care of that roam clear as soon as he can, but it seems like the majority of the operators are on site right now. I think maximum three, but Silver Fox is going to be playing the exact same angle he did before, and he's going to be hopeful to find an angle as well. He actually might pick one up if he doesn't get siege timing. I'm going to be, I'm expecting a push in, right downstairs and a kill in the favor of, of the Jaeger. If he does look in the right direction, that's actually gonna be the nomad off the board. Oh no, it's not gonna be the nomad. It's actually no, gonna be silver. He's gonna that, lose the gun. Jaeger. Yeah, that's gonna be Jaeger losing the gunfight. If Bonbon was off, he, he was he still had two air jabs in his hand, so that would have been a lot of utility off the board already. And along with that, he probably did just end up getting siege moment, as we saw right before that kill happened. We saw Silver Fox turning around, checking the other angle, and as we saw that simultaneously, Bonbon was walking around the corner. At the same time, I don't know if it was a fair gunfight, but judging by the health bar of Bonbon bon here, he probably did get caught with their pants down, so to speak. And Ratfink's going to walk into our poor Capcan trap, as we are going to be seeing as well. So we are at a 5 to 4, 4 to 4, as Pepperoni picks up a kill on Bonbon, bon, our Nomad, walking off any sort of flanking maneuvers and rotate holes that Pepperoni could probably try to get. Not getting the second kill, almost taking down Big Chi. They are melting down the defensive side again under the similar just circumstances that we saw last round where they just were able to push in aggressively. They got all the stuff down that they needed. They knew what they needed to do. They knew who was where, judging by just basic defensive holds that you see a lot on this kind of on this map. And they were just able to kill the entire enemy team as quickly as possible and as effectively as possible. Yeah, and that time they had the Malusi stay on site, and I think they've actually been consistent in keeping them on site the entire time. And speaking of consistencies, they're actually rotating out operators. Silver Fox is now playing the Malusi, and it looks like Pepperoni is going to be playing Vigil this time, and maybe a switch on roles, because Vigil, you do expect him to be playing that roam. You, I also expect Malusi to play the roam as well, but they were actually going to be staying 
like anchored on site and that's an interesting play because i mean he has five kills right now he's been playing it pretty effectively but like i said if they do actually come to the realization that the attacking side is pretty slow in the room clear they obviously pick it up now they, they've actually started to pick it up and they're doing a lot more consistently this time but if they actually start to apply a lot more pressure than what they've been, done before i feel like that malusian visual could be pretty damaging to their actual setup to push their way back onto site mm -hmm. defense just needs to have as you already as you probably already elaborated just they need to push a little bit more aggressively they need to have a much more aggressive hold because as we mentioned last round it looked like they were almost all sitting on site and clearly what's happening is the attacking side is able to take advantage of all of them on site because they don't have as much hold on the full map as they probably should and then they are able to push in very effectively onto that map therefore crushing them it is a much more wide strategy you have to have and i feel like these two roamers as you are mentioning or these two alleged roamers as we are mentioning will end up fixing that and making the and making their defensive strategy a lot more wide spanned rather than specifically set on the site by itself yeah and the whole idea of a roamer is obviously important because they're there to waste time apply pressure and make sure that they spend as much time on you compared to spending their time trying to push site and taking care of the other utility on site that's the idea of it and there's a loud, loud dog barking in my house right now i don't know if you guys can hear that but the jaeger dying right off the bat was pretty much taking off that pressure right away the intel's going through as you can see big cheese been consistent with it recently so running through oh and it's gonna be taken care of so that right there is what you need that pressure has been applied now that that guy up there that just shot that Ayana needs to fall back and take his time on it and just make sure that he actually takes advantage of them pushing aggressively. And hopefully he can hold some some good old fashioned cheeky little angle, cheeky little angles you'll see happen a lot in Rainbow Six Siege. And then they'll be able to get a frag while they try to push in. I don't know if they will try to push in after something like that. They don't know exactly where he's at. And as I say that we have Raikai trying to push in with Silver Fox holding that angle all the way from Astronomy Room through bathroom to master bedroom by the looks of it they are just holding this bathroom hold making sure that they are wasting as much time as you were talking about and silver fox doing their job very well as the roamer when it comes to wasting time and applying pressure to their back line as we hit our minute 25 mark we might see a, ki a gridlock kill over here silver fox taking down raikai with a clean sneak attack coming on the bathroom but big chi getting that refrag onto pepperoni in astronomy throwing a frag grenade is going to kill and that is going to be a post mortem <laughs> you don't see that very often honestly the only time i've seen that is with capcan and we're oh, going to get that refrag an absolute bloodbath happening in the bathroom as we hit our last minute and our ace is blowing out the lost little holes that he probably needs on pool room in order to hold what they need to hold they don't even have the diffuser actually yeah, the Diffuser being down is going to waste way more time than they need to actually do. And it looks like the IQ is not going to be focusing a push on dis uh, towards the Diffuser and actually going to be worrying about red stairs. The pressure has been applied. Both the defenders and roamers are down, so they just focused it back onto site. And they're completely unaware of that. They don't have Big Chi with that unlimited intel. O Omega is actually going to be taking the first gunfight of, this, of the end round and is going to be losing his life in the process. And that is just kind of what ends up happening in these last 30, almost delicious 20 seconds that we have. We have the Diffuser. They know what they need to do. It is a 2-3 to three advantage on the attacking side. They just kind of need to push in and get the plant down. They don't need to try to take over the full side and kill everyone. But that is, of course, what is going to happen for Ratfink in pool room. Taking down both enemy operators who are both hanging out in pool room rather than trying to hold navigation. I feel like that was, again, a uh, fall of a much more passive hold which I talked about earlier, they are depending much more on the attacking side walking into them instead of them resisting much more. They just kind of keep crumpling and crumpling until they have no more to crumple. Yeah, I feel like the Roamers definitely played that pretty... It was well done. It was efficient. Yeah. So I can't really say that it was done poorly. He, they got the kills, but the trades of when it came to the attacking side worked out in their favor much more and mm -hmm. the lion pick it seems like he's actually trying to think of a six pick opportunity before he actually does lock it in it seems like oh no he won't he will be bringing the hard breach and that's interesting as well because this map like i said it's a little bit more roam heavy so you're going to be expecting aggression almost 24 7 so bringing that maverick i can expect when it comes to a wall being on the outside of the building but him playing inside the building because every single one of the hard breach are, are inside the building so him not being able to have much of support unless the attackers actually give him that support himself 
that can be very dangerous because of how long those that blowtorch can take to actually open up walls. Uh, in my opinion, he's probably just going to be using it to take care of the bandit utility or Kaid utility, and then uh, the ace will follow up with his own hard breach. So that's what I'm expecting, but it's still an interesting pick nonetheless. I, de I definitely would pick him over the lion, though. I'll say that much. I would also pick him over the line. I was thinking we are going to be seeing a classic. I'm going to six pick uh, my first <laughs> operator back to my first operator because they never expect that. It's oh, just yeah. it's just the ultimate surprise. But I feel like he was picking the Maverick to try to catch out any Cade Claws, but that is going to be way too much time wasted, especially since all the reinforcements are on the inside. You can't even repel to try to get the angle on the Cade. You just kind of have to pray that the Cade didn't place his claw properly. <laughs> and just hopefully you find it, but it's just gonna be a wasted effort. But the frag grenades and the M4 might suit him a lot better because there's a lot of people who play certain operators, not even for their gadgets, but just for the guns that they have because they just agree with them more. With Ratfink trying to drone out our upstairs and our Ayana seeming to push into basement, they're getting their maximum amounts of roam clear as quickly as possible to try to get as little pressure put onto them later in the round that we saw last round, which resulted in the 2K on both sides yeah th this is what i'm having an issue with right now i guarantee the man on repel outside Ratfink is going to be the the one droning and he's going to be repelling him to join Enham. but and just going to be pushing and peeking with only his face and he needs to have a drone with him bonbon's going to be there as well but he took way too much time to just start moving forward and i think that's just what you're seeing right now is the lack of communication because that iq should be up there ready to join bonbon bon to actually start moving towards site a much more consistent speed and the gridlock still has not used a single one of her, her tracks and that's going to be bonbon bon taken care of Ooh. pepperoni's gonna be taking care of bonbon bon. that's because that support is not there the iq fell off and they're just i feel like most most of the plays coming from the attacking side have been mainly solo and yes it's been working in their favor they have they have they're up around on SM, smu but or cmu rather and it's been working out they've been winning their gunfights but they just need to start cleaning up because these defenders will adapt to it at one point and I feel like they fully scared them last round with how much roaming that they had on the defensive side. Mm -hmm. I feel like they aren't playing as roam heavy, but they scared the IQ into completely detaching from Bonbon. Bon. They scared them so they would not try to push up because they were scared of the backward pressure that they would have as a result of that. And we are also going to be seeing Enham, our IQ in question, dying as well as they try to push in through astrology by the looks of it and we're gonna be seeing big chi taking some gunshots from behind not realizing it's behind us pepperoni gets the double for his round it is a two to five but corwin is down and not out over somewhere over the rainbow we aren't fully sure the roaming doing its job perfectly applying as much pressure taking supplies away from the main battlefront in order to get some more kills as silver fox finally finds his shot onto big chi and they are a roamer in question. Ratfink taking on Swolverine and Pepperoni ending it with a three kills on this round. Ratfink just absolutely showing just that MP5K is just nuts. It is just very good and I, it is a very consistent firearm. Yeah, that whole play when it came to, like I mentioned before, the gridlock still had the track stingers in hand. The utility was not put to use. So that being said, that Silver Fox could ha was free to roam that section of the map. He ran straight up the stairs. He went straight to 90 and took care of kills as he saw fit. Actually, I believe the first kill was an aviator, and he talked. He caught the Yayana off guard. So with that gridlock off the board, and ooh, actually, we're going to be seeing an Aruni. I'm going to cut mm -hmm. myself off right there. And I do like the fact that they did... Oh, no, we're switching sides. I, I'm, I'm lost right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're switching sides. Yeah, I was wondering why these plays are going to completely switch off, and the Nomad's going to be switched off as well, speaking of. Onto the Ace, they... I feel like there probably could have been a better one. I haven't seen their strap book, so I don't want to say too much about it and who, what they actually need when it comes to their strats themselves, but, but taking that Nomad off might not be the play, in my opinion. Again, I feel like it's the logic of we don't want too many people on one thing. It's the idea of too many cooks in the kitchen. They already have the Dekebi as they have, she at least has a gadget for the roam clear. So while you're using more utility for your roam clear here, we are going to be seeing and more utility in the form of using... Uh, one operator's gadget and then probably gonna end up being Corwin or Pepperoni on our roam clear like the primary meat drone roam clear rather than the Kebby just ring in the phone and with the Aruni pick we recently did unban Aruni and Tachanka they've been out long enough where they are available for open play one a hundred percent gonna be played way more than the other and that one is going to be Aruni who brings a lot to the table in both projectile denial and person denial yeah, and 
like you said, with those logic bombs in hand, yes, it would be easy enough to clear out those roams when they are present in the position to actually worry about those roams and actually try to take care of that pressure. But the potential will always still be there. Mm -hmm. Once you place down that utility, you don't have like it's passive at that point, and they just have to wait for them to trip into it. Instead of like if Nomad died afterwards, it wouldn't be an issue. But Silver Fox finding a Ooh. kill, being the hard breacher onto Rapink, and that is going to be the roam off the board already. And that pressure is no longer going to be there, and they can actually be free to find the next one in line. That's actually going to be the cap can. Back to what I was saying, the there's always going to be roam potential. So with that, those logic bombs going off, they will take care of the current roam, but there will always be roam potential, and they can always come back on it without any sort of consequence. And that is just something that just ends up happening on the defensive side with Ratfink down. That is their primary roam. We still have Raikai, our cap can, doing a bit more of an aggressive roam on the bottom side, trying to catch anyone out as his phone starts ringing. Will he answer the call? Yes, he will. <laughs> as we are seeing him answer that call, that is mandatory if he doesn't want to get completely outed and being in piano room while Wolverine pushes into navigation trying to get any peaks with that good old-fashioned meat drone that is your head trying to see if you can get a kill hopefully trying to point out hopefully try to point out any sort of gadgets that they find and ideally in this situation not dying in a tragic yet potentially comedic fashion <laughs> yeah and like i said the current roam will be dealt with he had to fall back because of the call going through and he's actually going to be rotating back up the stairs and taking a significant amount of damage and right right when i say that he's going to be falling back he's going to be taking a step back the pressure being applied he's going to be going back downstairs and going to apply some pressure somewhere else and try to find a flank if it's still up because they don't have a single operator in their lineup to actually deal with this roam like i said the only time they would actually counter if the call goes out at the perfect time while he's rotating up those stairs but that's very unlikely Mm -hmm. and we are seeing a lot of gunfights and we're seeing uh bonbon bon here utilizing a rooney to her greatest potential using the glock on glock with a stock and using her gadget getting that awesome flick coming in against wolverine as they push right into b side here and they plant they are able to get that bomb down and now the roles have switched it as a two to two in the favor of cmu with the hp uh, absolutely considered. Raikai taking down Omega Wolf. We are down to a one-to-one -one Silver Fox holding it from a long angle oh. and not <laughs> able to run in, showing that Aruni Wait. just being absolutely great. Raikai's not going to go for the defuse. He's going to go. No. He's probably shaking to make sure that he's but... still alive, and he still has time. <laughs> Thank God. I, I was hoping. That what? was that was almost because. That... I'm sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I can't, I'm, well, I'm like, speechless right you, now. You, you, I am. I also don't know how to. <laughs> how, uh, you heard the Aruni go off, and this would probably go through my head as well. It would go through the same way that Riot guys did. I heard the Aruni go off, but I got no clue if that dude is down. I just know that they're on their way. I personally would have probably just stuck the defuse and taken that gamble because those Aruni gates do a lot of damage. So oh, yeah. I feel like that was just much more of he wanted to double check and much more of risk it and get the much more guaranteed win in the form of him checking in on the operator rather than risk it and pray to God that a Rooney was able to get ace downed but not out. And okay. we are going to be switching our cap can over to Frost as well, who I, I personally prefer the cap can pick over the Frost in the situation, despite Frost having that secondary shotgun utility. Okay, I'm less worried about Raikai's play there and more the Ace's play. Because he had a smoke grenade in hand. Plenty he of did? Time. Yes, he had a smoke grenade. He could have thrown oh. it. So that's why I'm sitting here. I'm just like, dude, <laughs> what? There, there, was an, there was an out there. You could have thrown it in there instead of just running straight through the laser gate. I guess it didn't cross his mind. But Raikai, I'm I was entirely fine with this play. He had no idea what was going on. There's no points on. Aruni couldn't call it. Hey, I just downed him. I don't know if they have any intel on it. They probably took care of the default cams. So the fact that the Aruni gate made that that shock noise, it, that could mean that he threw his smoke grenade into it, and Raikai was checking if he ran into sight. And that was entirely understandable. He heard the call out from the, the Aruni gate. He ran over to go check it, and he saw that he was down and that he was free to defuse. But I'm just sitting here. Silver Fox, you've been playing so well. The fragging has been... The frag potential coming from you has been beautiful. And then he makes that small misplay, and that's going to be losing a round in the favor of 
Butler. And it's just, it's devastating to see that happen because he's such a good player and he has so much potential. And sadly, Bon Bon's going to be taking it. He's running out of smoke. That's already so much utility off the board. The attackers already have so much time saved. That's those smoke grenades can. I've, I forgot the exact time of those smoke grenades. 30 but that seconds is a, total. 10 30 seconds. seconds. 10 seconds each exactly 30 seconds total just save for them and that's going to be a lot of time saving that last initial push so that is definitely going to be a huge impact and that's going to be a trade as well into corwin wow okay this is going to be this is interesting so far i can say that much <laughs> i'm just surprised it was the smoke that ended up trying to run out rather than raikai as our frost or even even better yet our mute on big chi and we're also going to be seeing swolverine taken down that is a lot of soft breach in the form of both breaching charges along with Ash is just base gadget as we are just going to call everyone on the map and hopefully someone answers, but we will not be fully certain until it does end up calling. And I would also like to talk about, speaking of wasting time and the smoke dead, we did drop the Aruni, which had such a powerful play coming in <laughs> and we just completely <laughs> dropped them. Yeah, I think the reason behind that was because I don't think the ace would ever do that again you live you learn and i don't think he'll ever run into another rooney tra trap in his life unless he was required to because lack of utility and that's gonna be the first gunshot as well that's gonna be the hard breach taken Ooh. off the board a lot of utility already in that silver fox a fragger as well playing on that hard breach rule taken care of and the man advantage has already been in the favor of the defending side so it's pretty much a wrap already that's just my prediction but caster's curse hopefully kicks in as well so i'm waiting for a good round I've been noticing that Butler has just been, in general, a much stronger defense than CMU, and we are uh -oh. going to be hitting a bit of a rough patch. Oh, we're good. We're good. Thank God. <laughs> that rough patch has turned back into its usual smooth, silky texture, and we are going to be seeing Pepperoni getting to a gunfight and ultimately dying to Ratfink over here as our Jaeger and Raikai taking down Omega Wolf for the final frag of the round, showing Butler with their much more aggressive holds, they have been holding a lot more aggressively. They are thinking of the issue that CMU had last round, which was they weren't pushing out far enough to try to hold more of the house to waste more time. And what ended up happening is they are holding much more aggressively. And I feel like that's just kind of how Butler operates. They were very aggressive on the attacking side, and now they're very aggressive on the defending side. And it's paying off massively against CMU, who seem to have a much more passive and much more intel-based both attack and defense well they took an advantage right off the bat the attackers took that smoke off the board that's a lot of time saved the aggression i was not expecting from the smoke specifically i'd expect from any other operator besides the smoke if you're running the sm or the fmg maybe but you're still a very important operator and that impact that you just gave your own team is too much to deal with and the fact that they still won it, it was, I mean, it worked out in their favor, obviously, but I don't think the smoke was very helpful in that whatsoever. If anything, he added pressure to the, his teammates. So I don't know if they coordinated that, if the smoke was planning to run out like that, but either way, if it was coordinated or not, definitely was not the one. And even if it was coordinated and you wanted someone to run out and have that pressure, there are a lot more people on your team that could have done that most likely a lot more effectively or at least without as much risk as putting a smoke outside would provide because you have you had your mute which is a primary runout example you had your jaeger which is the stereotypical runout example you had a lot of operators that had the ability to run out and get a kill or two and have still have all their gadgets placed down on site or off site wherever they put it and their utility is still being well utilized rather than the smoke dying, and then that just gives the attacking side 30 more seconds, just right in their hands. Yeah, and we're not actually going to be bringing a smoke this time either, so uh, <laughs> maybe maybe smoke's just the aggressive operator that they feel safe with, so taking it off the board might just ease it up a little bit more, and I, I haven't seen it run out yet, and looking at the scoreboard on the left, realizing that Raikai is actually the frag potential coming from this man is absolutely breathtaking, and mm -hmm. hopefully he can actually keep it up as well. And as you do see, the pressure is being applied up from upstairs. There's been, yeah, Rakai applying that pressure as well. And I wish my dog would be quiet. I, hopefully you guys cannot hear that right now. But yeah, it seems like Enham and Raikai have been playing it pretty well. Rakai finding the correct times to actually rotate down. And Pepperoni already running into a Capcan trap. And they have not been made aware of these things at all. They had, I mean, they should be. Raikai, Raikai and who was the other person that was running before? I believe it was, gosh, someone on the other team was. I think it was Omega Wolf. Omega Wolf it was, was bringing Omega Wolf. Yeah, it was yeah. Omega Wolf. Yeah, they've been both bringing the Capkins, and it's going to be consistent throughout the game. And the, another one! Another one just went off, and no call-outs. 
the drones are going through and they're not calling out Capcan traps. This just shows the consistency in their comms and they need to start picking it up. And I saw a Capcan on a different match, also on Villa. I feel like Capcan might just be a pick for Villa or one that I've been seeing lately because we have seen three separate teams on, granted this is the same occasion, but we have seen three different Capcans, three different players pick Capcan on three different teams on Villa because it just seems to be a very consistent pick and we're hearing another one go off. <laughs> Just oh my god. A gosh. lot of explosions go. I'm pretty sure that might be the breach charges. I'm hoping those are the breach charges coming in from Ash, and they were. Thank God. But our Ash is going to go down in astronomy over there. Omega Wolf's just not going to care. Not even going to try to push up. There's another teammate who has also died by the hands of Enham. Our oh Legion. My. And Omega Wolf also getting taken down by Enham. He is going, <sighs> might I say it, a little ham. <laughs> Dude, they. Gonna, okay. Okay, oh. Wolverine got taken down. Sorry to cut you off, but Wolverine got taken down, and he is still down after the three deaths from the attacking side. Can get can Enham get the ace? We are we are one kill away from the ace on the attacking side. Silver Fox able to take down Bon Bon. We still have Enham on the board. He is on the site. He doesn't have the diffuser though. It is already in the bag for Butler. They don't need to do anything, but. We are probably going to be seeing Legion here trying to get a little bit greedy. That is the Jaeger. The Jaeger is going to go down. Silver Fox at a triple. It could be a double ace situation. He is Legion mind and Raikai stealing the ace <laughs> from our Legion. Granted, it was at the expense of the Legion's life. The Legion is still alive. And at the end of the day, that is probably what is best. But that ace would have been pretty cool to have and an awesome thing to see on NECC. Would that have been the first ace in week seven of NECC? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really been looking back on VODs recently, but I'm just... We are currently being informed that we have not had an ace before, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to say that, that we could have just witnessed two of them in a row back both on the exact same team <laughs> or in the exact same round rather a or the legion had the potential and then ace as well but like i was saying i cut you off there in the middle and i have to apologize for that but the fact that enham i don't know how the ash got down but the ash got down was waiting for a revive and then there was two actually no three operators in in the presence in the proximity of that ash waiting to upper but then the Enham just came in and took care of every single one of them before Wolverine died. So Wolverine had the countdown going down, and I was expecting Wolverine to be the first person to get down because they're aware that they just downed an Ash. But every single person not aware of the situation, showing that their comms are, again, not consistent. The call didn't go through, and, en and Enham could just walk around freely and take care of kills as he saw fit. And then, like you said, the Capcan traps, those have been consistent as well. They have not, the comms have not been there either. There's been, I'm pretty sure, three Capcan traps detonated, and the only time we saw a Capcan trap shot at was in the end clutch by Ace when he was staring at it for a whole 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's an over-exaggeration, but you get my point. Yeah. Uh, I think it's also just the maximum amount of BM to down the Ash and then kill all <laughs> of her teammates, but not kill the Ash. I, I don't like think he was Ash aware. Is still there. I don't think he was aware of the Ash down. That's I why I feel he like probably what happened was since uh, there was a teammate in astronomy that was still alive, there probably wasn't an active player. But the Ash uh, and our Ash in question as Wolverine just walking over a lesion trap and then going down by means of that rather than by means of gunshot. And we're going to be seeing a double kill on blue side and Ham, and I believe it was either Raikai or Big Chi that picked, no, Ratfink. I lied, it is a five to one. <laughs> Already we're seeing Butler hit with that aggressive hold in a flawless round to win them the first round of week seven. As we're gonna be seeing, we are going to be moving on to Consulate with CMU attacking first, I believe, yet again. And that was great. I, I'm really excited to see how Butler performs, actually. They hold really aggressively. And they hold in a way that I think is both fun to commentate and fun to watch because of the fact that they pick things that aren't necessarily very common picks and along with that, utilize them properly. Have, has my point been proven yet? <laughs> Their comms <laughs> not being consistent. They're, they clear, clearly the strat wasn't there. We're going to be going to a five minute break as well. So that we will catch up on that as soon as I finish up my little little point right here the comms hasn't been consistent they didn't really have a stretch really go out in that last round it was pretty much gunfights going through like i said 
from both attacking sides so far, it's just been solo push. And we they've had like one person going at a time. There was there was inconsistencies in trades. Like you did see Enham, he got the first kill. There was no trade in return. He picked up the second one because of lack of comms. He picked up the third one, and then the Ash was just free for the taking. And he almost got the Ace as well, but the Capcan took it from him. And while Ace was on a terror at himself, though, but either way, the whole situation was kind of just a bust and was not pretty to watch whatsoever. And then on the last round, just proved it even more. The fact that they he, they just cleared the entire board, flawless round. Not a I don't even, I didn't see the damage dealt, but I don't even, I'm not even sure if there was much damage dealt to the defending side, but. That being said, we will be going into a five-minute break real quick. I have been Caro. This has been my buddy H over here. And we are going to be moving into map two. We're not entirely sure what that is now, but we will inform you when we get that information. So we will see you guys then. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and, and everyone in between. I am the letter H, and I am joined today by Caro. Howdy. <laughs> you probably already know us if you were here before, our little five-minute to six-minute ad break. But we are on round two of Butler versus Central Methodist Team 2, and we are going to consulate where I believe CMU is attacking first rather than defending first, as opposed to last round, as we saw. Do you have any opinions on consulate as a map, Carl? <laughs> Uh, it is definitely spawn peak heaven. It's a lot of our casters call it window simulator. So the fact mm -hmm. that the entire building is just surrounded by windows, there's a lot of roam potential as well. The staircases are spread out amongst the map. There are three different staircases. So it's going to be similar to Villa, but the fact that there is an actual viable basement, the middle floor, and then there's the top floor as well. When it comes to Villa, no one plays basement whatsoever unless you're playing secure area, which obviously that's that's not comp. <laughs> but <laughs> And then since we have three viable floors, there's going to be a lot more roam potential. we got to watch for a lot more angles when it comes to the attackers. They need to be consistent with that. They actually now, like I said before, the comms and intel need to start going through. So this is definitely a map that they need to start picking that up on. Because now, unlike Villa, this isn't going to be as frag heavy because there's going to be hard breach actually outside the building or at least going outside the building with a lot of protection because there's that overhang and then those two walls as well and you can't really just run out with it without major consequence so that being said a maverick will be expected ban and or pick coming into this map so the thatcher is expected thatcher is like a go-to ban 24 7. they probably won't go for another hard breach ban but maverick would be the one i'd expect but no they're actually going for the iq to counter well counter the counter to the cap can so mm -hmm. that's what I'm expecting right now. And, and the defensive bands are just kind of given. They're going to be like either Intel or Mira expected as well. So I feel like if they don't ban the Cade, they are seriously missing out. That is my yeah, biggest issue that we're going to see here. We didn't see the Cade ban. We saw a Clash ban going in. So I don't know if there's going to be a lot of hard breach denial coming in. We're going to be seeing Lesion oh. being banned. <laughs> Target pick right here. Oh. On, on on my boy, uh, what was his name again? Enham. 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 On our, our our homie Enham, just not being able to play his main. That is upsetting. <laughs> that is clearly like a target ban. I'm almost a hundred percent certain that is. If that isn't, that is pure coincidence. And we are seeing a Valkyrie ban. I would say that is a very solid ban. On uh the side of the fact that you are lat now lacking intel, but you still have the Cade and the Bandit, and the Mute. You still have the maximum amount of wall denial up. And in places, and in places such as, and especially, garage, we uh, that is going to be a, a lot. We might need a pause yes. right now. We might need okay. to get a pause in as okay, we are trying to figure out some technical difficulties. However, yeah. to continue my point, yeah, you are going to be missing out on a lot of wall defense, especially, but not limited to, garage door in the basement. Yeah, the region and IQ pick. IQ is entirely viable. I have no, I have nothing wrong with that. Because uh, not only will it mess with their plans with the cap cans. I mean, I personally do not like the cap can pick. But if they're going to be running it, if it's part of their strats, then they need to find a counter to it. And IQ is that counter. And not only will it be a counter to the cap can traps, but any other operator. The fact that they ban the IQ with the Valkyrie is an interesting one, but. Nonetheless, they need to ban that IQ if they do see that it is going to be messing with their plays a lot. It will be messing with the Ella, the Jaeger callout, the Mute callout, the Malusi callout. She can be used as a form of intel, not just to destroy the utility, but can call out the rest of the operators as well. The Legion being taken care of obviously is a target ban because the consistency on Enham is, has been flawless so far. So them banning him, it's not, it's not going to be too impactful. Yes, his traps are annoying, but... It doesn't. It won't be that big of a deal, personally. In my opinion, it won't be that big of a deal. He can just switch to another operator and frag just as well. And we are seeing Enham debating between operators, flashing, just absolutely hinting at the other unbanned operator that we are talking about today, besides Aruni, Tachanka, because Tachanka recently got his rework, and he also recently got unbanned after being in like I believe it's like a three to four month quote unquote quarantine period, where we just kind of just let them figure it out in a casual and in ranked to see if they actually are broken or if they're just good because no one knows how to play around them yet and they also didn't ban the clash we might end up seeing a clash pick basing on what enham is just kind of scrolling through <laughs> whether these are all joke scrolls or not i do not know however if clash does end up getting played and whoever didn't ban clash should just thinks we should have still banned clash 
I mm-hmm. think that'll be really funny. They're they're kind of just scrolling through operators right now, and looking through every single operator that they're scrolling through right now, just I'm realizing how many operators, or at least Im- huge impact operators, there are left on the table. They have the Malusi, they have the Mira, Clash. Probably, I mean, maybe they have VOD review. Maybe that's why they banned the Clash from before, and they're just like, oh, these guys play Clash. You got to get rid of it because m- most of their strats are based around the Clash. That's probably the reason why. And now that this might be the, I'm. Our point is being proven if they actually do stick this clash, but the Malusi is going to be a, is it a consistent roamer her, herself because her main gadget, like Jaeger, just you just have to slap it down. You can just start roaming all, all you want. She brings that nitro cell to the table. That's very effective when it comes to the vertical play, and that's what you, what you will be expecting on this map. Her pistol is pretty effective. Her her primary SMG is effective as well, and she's a three speed. She's an all around roamer right now. She's the old Jaeger, but in my opinion, better, because she still brings that nitro cell. So having her on the table is going to be very annoying, especially for S- or CMU, because they got to worry about clearing site or clearing that realm a lot more this time around. And they have to pick it up, like I mentioned before, comms, until their, their realm clear potential has not been up. So they need to start cleaning it up a little bit more before heading into this map, especially this map compared to Vigil. And I would have to agree or with you, though, Bill- we are seeing a lot of just lack of communication but we are seeing a lot of great gunshots and a lot of great gunfights coming in from swolverine specifically and silver fox specifically we're seeing a lot of kills coming in a lot of frags so i feel like it is a bad case of all aim no brain where they're really good at their fundamentals and they're really good at shooting people but when it comes to communicating that is something that they do need to work on rather than trying to focus solely on the pure skill of a few people because we were seeing a lot of that with the running into cap can traps with the running uh sometimes it could also just be a lapse of judgment such as when the ace just ran through that aruni gate whether these <laughs> are just things that they weren't thinking about because you don't see a cap can pick very often for example you might not expect it at every corner like most other siege players do at this point because he's so prevalent in the much more casual and ranked game scenes rather than a competitive scene so it could just be a uh, thing of surprise, but I also feel like it is primarily rooted in a lack of communication, as you have already absolutely established. <laughs> yeah, I just I you got to put emphasis on it because if they're doing a VOD review right now, hey, listen to me right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh-huh. But but like you said, with that ace play, how he did fall to the Aruni gate, he's now on the Cali. and hopefully mm-hmm. the awareness, the position. When it comes to Cali, your awareness, positioning, and everything is important because that sniper you you shoot once you're pretty much dead if you miss that first shot you're dead and there's a lot of situations where you will hit them and down it's going to be down but not out but there's also many other situations over again where yes if brook armor can be a great counter to that but obviously if strat book i mentioned before you can't really just say bring a rook to counter them the cali because this exact site is the only site i could expect a cali on there's there's been aggression from the defending side on Butler, so seeing the Cali... Oh, we see that Corwin back hey. right now, but having that Cali hold those long angles is expected to actually deal with, like I said, it is a window simulator. So, yeah, is this all going through? It looks like they actually might stick to Clash. I think we can go to an unpause once Corwin picks an operator. It seems like Capitao is going to be his pick, and once we get the readies, we should be able to hop straight back into the match. And, yeah, pretty much everything so far has been pretty consistent, and I think they might actually stick that Clash, and they will as well, so... Right there is exactly where you want to see that clash. And now, I since they banned him, the VOD review went through. I want to see why they banned him. I want to see why clash <laughs> is so effective. I do. Oh, no, come on, not the king. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, are we going to be seeing double? We are, we are replacing oh, our designated roam clear for a glass. Instead, we are getting a double sniper, double trouble team. They are just going to hopefully catch out some people. Probably ideally thinking about, as we were talking about, this is Windows Simulator. Everyone's going to run out. Or allegedly everyone is going to run out. It isn't a term of if. It is a term of when they will run out. So they're probably going to try to be holding much longer angles. And that'll end up working out, especially in that consulate main hallway. You can stand at the very end and then look into a decent chunk of B site. And they're just going to be trying to hold much more passively or much more of they're probably going to have their main attackers in the form of pepperoni swolverine and corwin just trying to go in as hard as they can with omega and silver as their primary backup supports or if they get caught out 
if the defending team gets caught out, they are able to quickly pick them off with Callie's one shot, one down, and Omega Wolf's very quick two shots, two down, I believe. Unless it's Rook Armor. Yeah, with the consistent the consistencies in the gunplay coming from Butler, CMU picking the Glass and Cali combination, I'm not a huge fan Ooh. of. But Wolverine is going to be the one to actually show that as well. That's going to be Big Chi off the board, and that's going to be a mute shotgun, or the SAS shotgun, rather, off the board, and that's going to be huge. But like I said before, yes, those snipers are going to be huge for close range, but it's all situational. There's so many variables to get thrown onto the table. Those can be easily countered just by pure gun skill. And Omega Wolf choosing it along with Silver Fox. I don't know, especially this site. I can expect maybe the basement to be a little bit more effective because you can hold a long angle if you get that diffuser down. But on this site, it's not exactly ideal. And that is something that you just have to consider. And we are already going to be seeing our first down coming on the defensive side. But that wasn't even from one of the two snipers that we are talking about. And Ham just going to get absolutely gunned down if he stays in the position he's in, in my opinion. Because we are seeing a lot of long hallways. This is where our snipers are strongest. Are in the long hallways and the long sight lines. So Enham has put himself into a great amount of risk to try to catch someone out. And Ratfink taking down Swolverino. Mega Wolf refragging onto Ratfink as I say that. And we are going to be seeing a very pass, much more passive hold than we're seeing from Butler. And as I say that, Raikai running out, <laughs> taking down Omega Wolf. There goes that passive hold theory that I had earlier. Is someone going to be trying to run in through this main door as well as Raikai is trying to hold the angle, trying to see if someone is just absolutely brave enough to try to walk through that area. But I don't think anyone particularly will. And Ooh. as I say that, Silver Fox using that one shot, one down sniper to take down Raikai. We're seeing Bonbon bon getting the C4 kill onto our Cali in question, saving our Capcan's life. That was a clutch C4, if I have to say so myself, as we hit the last 45 seconds of the round. Yeah, and that Cali being completely taken out of the picture, that once again is going to be a lot for that window going down. But it won't matter. Corwin's going to be fine one on a Bon Bon, and that's going to be the Malusi off the table, bringing it down into a 2v2 situation while the plant timer goes down. And we're going to be seeing Raikai getting another kill based off of Runout as we are going into the last 45 seconds. The defuse is planted. Enham and Raikai are the only two alive. Corwin is the only one on the attacking side, just hiding behind that desk, trying to fake him, doing some paperwork. Hopefully they don't bother him. They leave him alone in his office, but of course they won't. They're trying to take him down, and that is a triple kill. Two based off a run out. The last one in the final defusing round as Enham finishes the job, getting the final kill on the defuser. As we are seeing it happen, coming in for our main push, and then a plant, and then they were just able to get collapsed on because it was just our Capitao. It would have required a lot of skill. I feel like the Capitao should have used his gadget a little bit more. I don't think we saw any play of that. He should have used both the Asphyxiation and the Smoke Bolts. I would have just smoked it and then just left the window. Yeah, there's a lot of angles that could have been blocked off because in that situation, if he was to block him off, flame him off to the point to where he had the time to get back on that rappel and hold it from that upside down. Although they do have two operators, there could have been a support setup. Maybe he could have catched like a like an off pixel or something like that. Like because the way he had it set up, it was directly behind the desk. If he held it correctly, he could pre-fire a window because the other window was still closed off. The other one was open, so maybe he could just ping the diffuser because well, the diffuser's already pinged. If he starts hearing the diffuser to go through, he can start moving his way down from the other barricade, start pre-firing through it, maybe he can pick it up because the support is going to be going through. There's going to be one holding the window and then one sticking the defuse. So if they do manage to choke that out, then it would have been huge in the favor of the Capitao and the run out was the only thing that could really counter it, counter that at that point. That whole round just itself was pretty out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. That Cali getting that kill onto the Cap Can. The Cap Can, dod like Neo just dodging it, a bullet just right. Just I don't even know how to explain his <laughs> movements there he kind of just like rolled on his side while he was down yeah he we, we call just that luck. yeah he kind of just like rolled on his side while he was down at least that's what it looked like and then he just got out of that little his pixels just got out of the way from his crosshair and he wasn't able to get off that last shot to actually finish off raikai and then whoever I, it was the malusi last round managed to actually throw out a nitro cell through the window took care of him on the outside and he was managed to get Raikai up as a result. And Silver Fox, he did manage to take one, but obviously the Nitro Cell was just the outplay and took Silver Fox out of the game right off the bat when that happened. And yeah, it's just like I said, it's just the consistencies and comms. There's not, there hasn't been when it came to 
CMU. It's just Butler. Butler's the people, they're the team rather that's been just consistent in everything. And hopefully, the, and now as we see right now, Cali's where there's going to be a lot of effective play because she's going to be taking care of those walls. Cap, oh, that Kaid actually might be touching it. He's going to try to Kaid trick it nonetheless, but the ca the Kali is sitting there waiting, and this is where she will be as useful. Mm -hmm. And she is probably going to try to counter that Kaid, but they aren't really going to try to focus on that wall. They're trying to focus on pushing in through yellow rather than trying to get through the main wall, which is what you typically see. And along with that, we are seeing a Jackal on the attacking side. We did not get a Jackal ban either. Kaid still having a second claw. However, and that is going to catch out our poor, poor Thermite. Because they just didn't realize that you can just throw down a second claw, that he'd be keeping the second claw. And from there, it is just very easy to trick as we hit our minute 40. Uh, CMU just not knowing what to do. They are a bit dumbstruck on what to do, where to go. They're all holding the same positions as we are having, who I'm assuming is Jackal running up through the top, trying to find whatever roamers they can, getting an aggressive hold up top as well, trying to make sure, trying to pressure out Enham enough so they can get into the garage. And they, Enham's going to hear the call out for that hard breach device, but I don't think he threw it in time. He did not, as we hit our last minute 10. Yeah, there's been consistencies in, like I said, the comms when it came to Butler. As you saw, the the... The Womai and the Kaib were playing together. The Womai was supporting his yellow yellow door angle and while he could just freely start shocking the wall. But with that with those pings going out, he might actually hit a pre-fire and he's gonna be dodging from that position and hopefully the kill doesn't go through. This is gonna be enough damage. Oh. Raikai is actually gonna be the one to pick it up from the rotate. Or not the rotate, but the roam upstairs. I thought the Kaib hit the shots, but no, Raikai is there to support. This is just proving my point once again. This it's been perfect so far, and the teamwork and just like They've been working in unison so far, and Raikai, the push downstairs is exactly the move that they really want to do in this situation to get that support on site. Mm -hmm. and we're seeing a lot of explosions going on to the main garage door. Raikai taken down by Swolverine and Big Kai also taking down Swolverine for that instant refrag. We're down to a 2-2. Two to two. I believe it is the same uh, two operators that we had last round. Omega Wolf able to take down Big Kai on yellow stairs as well. Our Maestro trying to pressure off any sort of disable or trying to get off try to get everyone off of site so he can try to push on with his alda lmg that we're going to be seeing here you can just kind of dump that through a corner and then just pray and see if you get anyone oh but they also don't have anything to look through smoke so they are just kind of hoping to get something through bonbon bon just sprang through the hole able to find a shot onto corwin in question and we are going to be seeing omega wolf not being able to push in through oh, fast no. enough he's going to try to go for it. he's going to try to go for it and he is oh able to God. make it barely yeah. That was Barely. literally 0.1 seconds oh. from getting that diffuser off. I was paying attention to the timer to see how close he was to it. It was 0.1 second away from just counting down, and then the Thermite would have lost that round if he did not push that in time. His teammates were probably yelling at him, like, go, go, go. Now he's sticking that. You're not going to get an angle on that. He probably could have just prone and taken care of his feet from there. I mean, it, at that point, it was just gun skill <laughs> and just well, awareness of how the, the white van worked. Yeah, but also under the circumstance the Maestro is diffusing, whether you go for feet or not, they probably do not have enough time to react. And they have to stick to defuse now or never. It was just kind of a very sticky situation for our Maestro. But our Thermite better knock on wood after that. That is a lot of just great timing and a lot of circumstances that ended up leading into CMU's ultimate victory on Garage site. And I feel like it's something... That won't happen twice in one game. Yeah, like I'm not even playing the game and I'm getting, I'm starting to sprout gray hairs right here from the stress of these matches because the plays are going through, but there's so much being, there's, there's just a lot being missed and they could be taking advantage of so much right now, but they're not. I'm glad to see that Raikai is so on that roam right now. He's been consistent with how he's been playing his roam, cap gun traps. I haven't seen too many of those be triggered, but his gun skill definitely makes up for it. But the Cali's still being brought right now because they are going to be trying downstairs once again because that last, that point one second, I'm not going to do, that's seriously so close to the point to where they should have won that round. The all, or Maestro should have won that round right there. I, I'm saying it because the, the thought to actually stick it and he, he's completely aware of the fact that the Thermite has not been consistent with his aggression and he's going to be holding it back and you'd expect someone to fake it right there you have to fake it to try to get the peek out because of how close the angle was so i don't blame the the thermite to playing it very close but 
the play coming from the Meister was just enough to actually come close enough to winning the round. But at that point, it was just that last second decision that the Thermite made to start gunning him down. And that shows a lot of guts on our Maestro's part. He is just oh, kind no. of going to hope. And Raikai taking down Swolverine as he gets that top roam coming in on the third floor of Consulate. Raikai holding all the angles that he needs. And that is a lot of soft breach off the table for Swolverine, which granted, while you are in Garage, and that's not as important. That is a lot of vertical play you are now fully missing out on. Outside of what we saw last round, we were seeing Jackal use their super shorty or use their shotgun much more of to get that vertical advantage. And we are seeing it now as I am speaking. We are seeing the Jankle both roam clearing and while simultaneously doing that, getting that vertical pressure while Raikai tries to find a way to push into our Jackal Boy. and Enham taking down Silver Fox. Down goes our Cali and down goes our gadget clear. They have no choices. They cannot push in through Garage unless they get a physical person to shoot that Cade Claw. Why, why did Silver peek it with his gun and not use the gadget? Did he already use up all the gadgets? I don't know. Did he, he didn't use one. No. No, he just walked in with all the utility in his possession. Pe pick up the yep. trade, but that is the impact coming from the Cali. The Cali kill is not going to be a good enough trade in general, and that angle is not going to be good for Anaham. Although, yes, the potential for a kill definitely probably would have been worth it, but that angle is going to completely lock him out. And like I said right there, it's going to throw him off. Pepperoni's going to pick up a second kill onto the man that's been going on a tear recently, Anaham, and now he finally takes care of it. Ratfink is actually going to be the one to take down Pepperoni through the roam. The roam so far has been, now that Raikai's down, Ratfink is here to take his place, and it's been consistent so far as he picks up another one on the Corwin as well. It's just consistent so far. And oh! then he picks up the final one as well. Omega Wolf going down as well. This is, this is exactly exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to be bringing up the point one more time. Yeah. Consistency in those comms, the consistency in the support. They're working in unison. Raikai fell. Guess who came up behind him? The Jaeger. He came up and started playing his role afterwards because that is an important spot of that site. You got to start playing piano and take care of that and apply that pressure. And they weren't even aware of the pressure being applied because they just took it. They didn't take care of the intel. Like I said, the intel is not going through. So they they have completely been they're Then they're not aware of the Capcan coming around for the flank and taking care of them while they're trying to take that vertical. And the call out from the Kaid is going through saying they're sewing in piano right now. They're t opening up soft breach right now above. They're using shotguns to take care of it. The nitro cells opened up an angle to the point where I'm stuck in a really bad position. People need to get this thing. They need to get off this angle right now. And this is exactly Exactly what Ratfink did right there, and that is beautifully played by the defending side. And we are going to be seeing a lion pick coming in for our attacking side, trying to trying to catch out our roaming much more aggressively because Ratfink was our backup roamer in this example. Raikai went down, and Ratfink was able to pick it up. And as you mentioned, and I hope and I swear to God that I won't say it again, but you were you've been mentioning that they need to work on communication, and I feel like that is the prime example. That is a bit of our magnum opus of example of the biggest weakness that CMU is having right now is definitely seems to be much more on the communication side rather than the strat book and the game and the game sense and the general just gun skill of it. It is much more of we need to work on our communication because Ratfink is was able to kill Pepperoni in piano. Pepperoni, all he has to say is someone's in piano mm. and they are trying to push much more downward into garage. They just need to have someone hold the angle from outside into yellow stairs. And then that roamer is for the most part dealt with. Yeah, but here's the thing though, because when Pepperoni died, Ratfink followed up by pushing into piano and then made his way over towards the yellow stairs. But guess what? Capitao was right there looking away from piano onto yellow stairs with diffuser in hand. And at that point with that diffuser down, that's already enough time wasted because now they have to retake that diffuser before they start working on site. Unless they want to start working off of frags, which isn't the ideal situation, they needed to get that diffuser. And then the person to come get the diffuser was Omega being the, the thermite. And he tried to take it as quickly as he could, but he was he got taken care of in the process. But Corwin finally adding on. That's going to be Raikai and Bonbon bon taken down by Swolverine. And it's all a good fun right now because the defenders are being dropped from SCMU. The fragging ability is actually coming out, even with Intel or not. The gunfire and the aggression coming from Butler right now is not going to be enough to actually take care of any of the attackers. And they're actually coming out on top right now. Ooh, that was just inopportune timing for Big Kai at the top of Yellow Stairs. He had that sight down pat we had the aruni we had both the jaegers and we had the mute jammer on top of that pepperoni finding another kill onto radfink is up to enham to try to pick up the slack on this 1v5 we saw enham almost ace last round so honestly i do have faith in him 
I have at least a little bit of faith in him able to somehow clutch this ace. Although I do not think it'll happen. We're going to be seeing one kill going out of Pepperoni and Swolbring able to pick up the last kill onto our Mozzie down the hallway. While I wish an ace did happen because we almost saw one happen last <laughs> round. There was too much against him. They knew where he was. He was behind that desk and there was five people on attack. It was a steep hill to climb and there's no shame in dropping one round in a situation like that. It was kind of just comedic at that point because Lion just didn't let go of left click because of the size of his jump back. <laughs> he was just like, hey, I'll peek this at one point as he slowly makes a U shape around that long desk and he just didn't stop until he finally got that peek out. And that final like, final bullet, bullet did connect to actually take down that last defender. But yeah, that one that one was definitely different. It was a different site. Basement's been pretty consistent so far. Obviously, it was brought down to that last second when it came to that Maestro. So it was a pretty 50-50 situation. It did get brought down to a 1v1. And then when it comes to the site upstairs, they've been pretty consistent on it besides this one round. <laughs> they got dropped in instantly. There's three operators right off the bat. They were playing a little bit too aggressive. Although I, you love the confidence because you need that confidence to be able to peak angles consistently and efficiently. But... To have them to just drop like that is not good whatsoever because that is obviously roam clear right off the bat and then all they have to do is just really take sight and that's exactly what they did. They took sight with authority. They took care of that last man on long desk, which I believe was the Mozzie and then they could just push from there, which was beautifully played. I liked the, I did like the switch up there. The, there was a lot of aggression. I don't know if it was based off of Intel or just pure gun skill, but hopefully something, something significant was the reason why they won that round and hopefully they do continue with that momentum into the future rounds. Uh, they got a lot of very early game momentum with those first two kills within the first minute. And from there, they were able to push in a lot more effectively using their five-man advantage that they did have until eventually it was just Armazi. And then we saw a full drum mag dumped into some poor sod's desk as we were trying to catch that Mozzie out. Whether that was Intel... Well, no, that wasn't even Intel. Mozzie made himself very obvious that he was there. And from there, it was just either a flank or wasting time because they can just walk onto site now and plan and still get everything done. We're going to be seeing a lot of push coming through Swolverine trying to take down an Aruni gate, but ultimately flubbing that flash. It doesn't quite get far enough and probably goes under the Aruni gate, sadly. Although that is now that hallway flash and they now understand on the defending side which windows are still being currently watched despite a lot of them probably being broken by now. Yeah, the only presence really on the side of the consulate office is Big Chi, and he's currently waiting on his mute jammer on the top of Yellow Stairs. So if they actually do get the intel through, like I've said, they need to start getting that intel through, and it looks like they actually are going to be doing a little bit on repel. So if they actually do get the intel through and make the realization that they are pretty clear to start vaulting into sight because there's a large amount of repel and right oh. kind of another run out onto Silver Fox. Silver Fox is not having a good time. Currently 1-4 right now, and majority of the fact is because he's been playing Cali and Raikai has just been so consistent on his runouts and the call is coming through as well. So Anham's going to add on to it as well. That's going to be Pepperoni off the board. Their Fragger have, that has been consistent as well, but with that being said, they're going to be making a hard push on the site and it has not been successful so far. And we are going to be seeing Ratfink showing off that gun skill with that insane just flick. He was looking at the window. He saw the enemy peek out ever so slightly from behind that desk. And he was able to flick to the exact pixel that he needed to be at. That was the cranium. And then that cranium was just absolutely demolished. Ratfink taking down Omega Wolf from that same angle as well. We are down to a 4-1 to one core win is our last standing man as our capital with the para as well. So we're going to be pushing into main hallway up here. I feel like it's already in the bag for Butler. They already have an idea. And that is shown with Enham on our dock as he takes on Corwin on main stairs. There's not much that Corwin could have done in that situation. And even so, trying to kill that dock, unless you got that instant headshot, I feel like that's something that would take a lot more time than one might bargain for, especially if you're able to down but not out that dock. And then you're putting yourself at a lot of risk to try to confirm that kill if the dock is able to get away. Yeah, that was funny because that crosshair placement from Doc, it was definitely impressive because the mm -hmm. fact that he was aiming at his toes and then he flicked straight up to his head. So it was well played right there. It was a decent hold. The audio call out obviously did come out. He heard him start running his way up the up the spiral staircase and he brought his attention to it. And then he obviously won the gunfight as well. Even though the crosshair placement wasn't there, the flick potential was definitely there and he did go through with that kill. Well played by Enham. Like, what do you expect from that man? That He's been going on a tear recently, not only on the last map, but on this map as well. So you do love to see it. But an interesting pick, though, they they actually laid off the cap can. They're running, mm -hmm. Raikai's running a vigil right now. A different play, there's not going to be 
They both do bring that impact, because I do believe Rakai has been bringing that impact. Please pr prove me wrong. Uh, he has been running the C4 charge, I believe. He has been running the C4 charge. I, it's okay. I, I, I don't know which one exactly, but I'm fairly certain it's the C4 charge. I I, I don't know. I just had I just had like an imp going at a go run out, but yeah. But Raikai is actually gonna be bringing the impacts this time, as you can see. He's been pretty consistent with kill behind him. As you can see, those Roman A one A is a beautiful, well accurate. It deal a lot of damage if played correctly. And with that being said, if he continues with these runouts. It seemed like the attacking side has been ready for it whatsoever, and they still haven't opted to pick any sort of Nomad or Gridlock. Obviously, Nomad's the ideal, especially for this map. Like you said, no simulator. Only can you pull through the windows. So, going to be doing all that. There's been a lot of run out so far, so the fact that they have not shown any consistency in countering that just shows that they are not really adaptive. And we're seeing a really risky trailer breach coming in from Silver Fox where we are just getting that hot breach and aggressively into office. They've already overtaken office and are already working on trying to take over all the top floor with uh, other people on the other side in the form of Swolverine. And I believe I saw Omega Wolf Corwin holding down our yellow stairs, trying to make sure no one tries to run out on that side, along with just not even rotate. Because unless they destroyed the hatches up top, which I'm pretty sure that they did, they reinforced both of them as they did last defending round that they had in Garage. I feel like they don't have much more roaming left. And as I say that our primary roamer, or our alleged primary roamer, Raikai, in the form of our Vigil, not able to run out and get any more kills as well, probably got caught out doing what he loved, running out. <laughs> yeah, running around the map trying to find those kills and trying to apply that pressure while he still could. And sadly, he wasn't there to actually deal with it or actually couldn't counter it as well because the attackers actually did find that kill onto him. And that is going to be a huge impact because... Now it's all going to be left on the rat thing. The ping is going out. That jackal clear is going to be pretty consistent. He's going to be doing a little damage, but he's not aware of the fact that there's someone directly to the left of him, and that reposition may or may not be the death of him because he has the piano there, but the pre-fire is going to go through. A Swolverine taking down Rapping. That's both the, those consistent roamers, both the six kill men off the board. So at that point, they can start making their way back down onto that yellow site, and hopefully that these picks will be consistent as well. Flashbang is going out, and this might be the last push for the round. I, I'm also sensing that last push of the round as we're having Big Kai holding out this yellow stairs angle, this cheeky rainbow six angle through the car door. Swolverine securing their double kill for the round. Big Kai seeing a foot, risking it, I think hitting all the bullets into the car. I don't think a single one got over there. I'm pretty sure they all went into that car's main chassis. And from there, the Wamai is just absolutely saving that position that Big Kai has been standing on, been revealed. They all know where he's at. They all know Ooh. where Big Kai is at. Able to get two people on those yellow stairs, both the Capital and the Lion. Big Kai is the only one left at our three to one, but he got the call outs. He got what they needed. Big Kai able to get the last flick onto Omega Wolf as we are seeing, holding it down perfectly. We're gonna be seeing a 4K coming in on Garage. Oh my gosh. That's an ace. <laughs> in which I have been told by our production staff that is the first ace we have gotten. Oh, it's not the first ace. It's still hype. We have just been informed I was misinformed. <laughs> However, that is still hype to see in the round. Big Kai just absolutely not realizing. Big Kai realizing that that angle, you can't shoot through that window, able to still get two kills onto yellow stairs. And from there, with just all the intel that Omega Wolf had provided, because that's where I'm assuming it was. There were three people coming in from that side. He was able to push in very effectively and secure the ace. That is why I am freaking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole breakdown of that whole situation was the inconsistent of in the inconsistencies of them going down yellow stairs and not holding down. There was no support and no not even a pre-fire, but just no ADS going down to that black sedan because there was not only a call out through the lion scan but the lion should have called out the fact that he just tried to pre-fire him through the back chassis of the car so with without those call outs going through he managed to just spray down both of them while they were both holding down shift so took down both those attackers he turned around took care of whoever was in the hallway and at that point he just started rolling them from there because the last two remaining attackers just i he was managed to isolate the 1v1s but the attackers isolated it for them 
and he could take care of the guy in the office hallway. And then he, the last place that he'd expect the, the last attack to be would be in the rotate, and that's exactly where he looked pre-fired, caught a little bit of a glimpse of him, and then he could start getting that last kill from there. And it's it was beautifully played. I'm not going to take away any credit from, from him. Oh, no. But the, yeah, of course, but the attacking side definitely was the reason why he did easily just take that ace away, or gave him that ace, and he just gave it to him. <laughs> and most of it, I'm, I'm going to say right now, I'm, I don't want to point fingers, but I feel like the line was one of the main reasons personally because I feel like the call out onto that sedan should have went through and even if the call out went through and he was rel too reliant on his teammates he should have been holding it himself and waiting for that pre-fire to go through and he lost the gunfight because of it. Big Kai also fell victim to not only being shot at by or not only shooting at the lion and missing so the lion could have just called that out but also fell victim to lion's just base gadget his whole his whole spiel so from there that they they already probably did know that Big Kai was at that sedan, but either no callout was properly made or they were just not able to adapt. We were seeing a Twitch drone go down. Poor Radfink trying to make sure that everything gets taken down, trying to get that clever, clever little Cade Claw, but a frag grenade will get it done in the end of it. I believe Arcade's going to try to trick it again, but it's going to prove to no avail as our ace it successfully gets the angle that we need where we saw the plant where we saw the plant last time before we switch sides. We're going to be seeing a very stock push coming in. For Garage, we have Bon Bon up in Piano Room and going towards Main Lobby, just making sure to destroy all of the floor that he can to add as much pressure. And with one hatch not reinforced, that is two hatches not reinforced. That is free entryway to both Basement Hallway and I believe one of the sites as well. For Bon Bon or Sledge, Wolverine going to take going to go down and Silver Fox able to get that first frag onto Radfink. I believe Radfink already used all of her Twitch drones, however, so it ultimately is not the biggest deal, but you don't want to you still don't want to lose any operators if you don't need to. Yeah, we're starting to have a little bit of a repeat from last map where we have still four operators remaining on both sides and we're counting down to that last minute. But as I say that, Bon Bon taking down Silver Fox, and they're gonna be making their last initial push here with Pepperoni playing the other Spanish operator right now. And that's going to be huge because that mirror window is going to be very consistent in the way that, that he he should be holding down that yellow staircase with the Ayana going through and that Intel needs to be taken care of as soon as he can. But the vertical is still going through. 45 seconds remaining and this actually might be the final kill to initiate the final push and at least comfort the final push. And that's exactly what they needed. And now the push on the B site is going to be going on right now. Mm -hmm. And the push on the B site is something that you would expect from Butler to happen very aggressively. And this is very passive for the standards of Butler, actually. We are seeing a much more passive hold coming in for Pepperoni. Pepperoni able to find one frag on a big Kai, but not able to follow it up as Bon Bon just kind of waltzes down yellow stairs over here and just finds his mark and is able to just plug that Mira full of bullets. Yeah, I expected the mirror to be played a little bit more consistently, but I, because I assumed with that minute counting down, they started to actually, or they needed to start focusing on working on more horizontal, less vertical, but it actually did work out in their favor by sticking with the vertical. The sledge opened up another angle and managed to pick up another kill onto the cap can with that SMG 11. And that was initiated that final push. There was two remaining defenders. They took care of the first one, and then the last one was Pepperoni, like I mentioned on that Spanish operator. Could not it may have to pick up pick up one kill, but that could not consistently pick up the rest, and he was taken down because there was a push down the yellow stairs as well. So it was decently played. It was actually well played by the attacking side because the the because uh, he had two options for that sledge: just go downstairs to help out, or just take care of that vertical. But everyone waited outside until that last pick went through, and you just got to give him credit because Butler, like I said, the round switch. So. They're just as consistent on attack as they are on defense. And I honestly, my personal opinion, my little prediction, hopefully Caster's Curse doesn't kick in, but I feel like Butler is going to be the, on top in this last round and probably going to be winning this best of three as well. I feel like it is, I feel like that is the ultimate thing that we're going to be seeing here. We're seeing Butler just generally having... I feel like the biggest difference is definitely in the communication of Butler because as we have been talking about all match, CMU just seems a lot more unorganized than Butler. All the personal skills of the players on CMU are great. We have seen awesome examples coming in, especially in Swolverine and Pepperoni and and just basically on the entire team we have been seeing. But it's the lack of teamwork that we are seeing that is and the ultimate downfall for CMU. While Butler has all the same skill, but is able to work much more together and much more as a full team rather than a bunch of people. 
Of course, and if you look at the current leaderboard right now, you will that point will be proven correct. Because if you look as you go through it, they're all consistent around at least like a two kill range of each other, at least. And as you look on the right, the top two frag. Compared to everyone, there's is going to be like a four to three kill difference, and it's it's a bit. Okay. Playing their roles pretty, and with those comms going through, they've been that well that they've been doing well in that department as well. So I'm expecting another pretty efficient push as well here. And we're going to see two to mm -hmm. so, and the initial push to the admin. And hopefully they can actually show the consistency in the droning. And, and right there, perfect. See, that's exactly what I wanted to see CMU do, or uh, SCU do. I can't talk right now. CMU, I was, I was first, or I was right the first time. Okay. And then we're the first yeah. roamer. And then we're just going to leading it in straight to the 5v4. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be seeing Raikai getting his first kill onto Silver Fox over here, as our Jaeger, who I believe is our primary rover, outside of our usual Omega Wolf or Swolverine realm. I feel like they designated the Jaeger, or Jaeger has been much more designated as a realm character than those two. However, we're going to see Bon Bon just trying to tear his way through this main office break room, coming into junction into main hallway third floor as we're trying to catch out anyone and any traps using the good old-fashioned meat drone at the risk of your own body we are going to be seeing the twitch almost body blocking that frag grenade that was a very terrifying frag grenade to watch <laughs> i almost saw someone if not some two people die ratfink able to find a kill on omega wolf swolverine able to take down bon bon being the first death on butler's side it is down to a four two three favor of butler Three to three favor, three to two favor, Butler favor, as Big Kai and Pepperoni both find frags as they all try to push onto site. Everyone's dying, bullets are flying. We're seeing Enham take down Pepperoni. The, the defuse is going down on Butler favor. We're going to be seeing the roll switch as the defuse is planted onto A side. Corwin does not have much leverage to try to get over there. He has a lot to push through, he has the rotates to push through. However, they aren't holding as many angles on the Butler side to try to prevent a push. They're going to try to force it out by just wasting time and doing what the defending team needs to do as well. Corwin's just not going to be able to push in through. They all have the angles that they need at multiple angles. And Big Kai is able to secure the final kill onto Corwin as he tries to push onto A site to defuse the bomb as he was just out there sitting in B site. Just hoping that they were going to try to move into there, but why would they when A side's right there? Yeah, that I was hopeful because <laughs> I was talking up Butler and I was saying, yeah, these guys are pretty consistent with their callouts and everything. And then, like, as soon as I said that, when you were talking about your your points, holding down the sprint button, not going to be eighty anywhere, and he got taken. I don't. I don't. Twitch, I... kill. Oh, I'm lagging right now. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you pick it up from now until I finish yeah. off. Uh, despite our technical difficulties that we are having right now, I believe I caught the 90% of it. I am not fully sure specifically on what callouts or what strategies that we are seeing a lot in the defending side, but we are going to be seeing a mute switch out for a frost, so it's probably going to be a slightly more aggressive hold because of the frost traps with the ability to kill and our cap can traps with the ability to also kill. We're seeing a much more gadget-based defense, a much more, as I have said in previous streams, laissez-faire strategy of holding, where we are going to be seeing a lot less physical gunfights using the operator's firearms themselves, but much more of, hopefully, they get some kills and slow them down enough using the gadgets and the information that they have from said gadgets in order to get the kills that they need. And I feel like this is building into the weak the biggest weakness that we have discussed of cmu where we have a lot of intel based gadgets that will end up giving them the intel that they have been lacking a little bit yeah instead of being the people to worry about searching out for that intel they are now just have to place on passive gaps to be able to allow the gadgets give them the intel themselves and hopefully my internet starts to flatten out now because it's it's not consistent whatsoever and we're just going to be spiking up and down but i feel like right now we've been doing pretty well but that being said going into the 6-2 being match point you just if you want to look at the scoreboard real quick big cheek currently hit that double digits no one else has done that yet so i'm expecting that man he should be sitting back giving off that intel but yeah 
that secondary that secondary fragger role pretty well running straight in and, and the choice to bring raikai as that entry frag even though he has that hard breach even though much use for him besides maybe the top yellow stairs that's the only other place i could really see it become or come into use whatsoever so seeing rai actually play that entry frag and big chi playing it as well is pretty interesting and they need to start slowing down and grab their a little bit more intel i'm talking to you guys up for your your communication so please prove me right here and actually throw some drones in. And we are going to be seeing a drone thrown out. A healthy medium between being yourself the meat drone and the actual metal drone. We're having the hologram drone of Ayana as we were talking about last round on Villa. The utilization of that infinite drone or the in theory infinite drone coming in as they are going to be running around at the minute 35 mark. They are wasting a lot of time gathering intel, and they're going to be hitting that one minute mark where they need to start making things happen. They need to start doing that if they want to try to get the leverage that they need in order to push onto the site that they want to get onto. Big Kai over here getting over to A, peeking through that little hallway, straight through A site, over into the other site line. He understands that someone's there. All callouts have been, in theory, release out we are hitting our minute we're having big kai run up with the ayana trying to scout out much more effectively to see who is where and what is how and we have rai kai over here also pushing in on our ankle as we hit 54 seconds left on the clock as rai kai finds the first kill of the round upon swolverine trying to peek out through our main hallway over to b big kai taking down silver fox i feel like that's the kill that he needs to get over to a and from there i feel like cmu is just going to melt in our final round over here yeah, those first two kills are definitely be impactful enough, and then Bonbon bon adds on to the fun. Wolf could be taken down as well, bring it to a 2v5 while the plant's still going down. Corrin's going to be in returning the favor onto Ratfink, and then hopefully the last remaining defender can actually help out that Kaid, but it doesn't seem to be in their favor whatsoever. Mm -mm. I feel like it's already in the bag for Butler over here. We're at 35 seconds left on the diffuser. We're in the same situation. Corrin is at a 3-1, to one. sights on A. Not able to find the shots that he needs to find as he's just worming around on the floor. And that is going to be the W of his best of three for Butler. Finalizing it on the attacking side rather than on the defending side, which I felt like they were much stronger on on Villa. So I thought we were going to get a much bigger advantage on the consulate defending side for Butler with Big Kai as our MVP on the MVP screen. And that is something that I personally agree with. We were seeing a lot of big boy plays. We were seeing a lot of just in general kills and a lot of cheeky angles coming in from big kai yeah corin definitely could have came out on top there if his positioning was actually there <laughs> he was laying down prone in the middle of a double door leaving himself open to two separate angles that they were entirely aware of they gave out calls from the long desk there was two currently inevitably the death of him i'm still lagging up a little bit i wish i could actually continue to talk but yeah, that being in the end of it right there, that BO3 went by pretty fast because of Butler's consistency compared to, compared to, uh, and I'm blanking right now, I forgot the name of the team, please, please tell me what the name of the team is. Uh, teams are CMU and Butler, CMU was yeah, CMU, thank you. But yeah, C CMU, I just, for VOD review right now, for VOD review purposes, the only reason why I would say anything about their intel is because it's been inconsistent their comms are not going through pretty they just need to start picking that up the calls need to go through there's a lot of situations where i found a kill go through and then the defender can continue on to another user as well that's pretty much that's happened multiple times over many rounds and throughout both the maps so if, you, if you're if you're watching this right now take take note of that and start to clean that up a little bit more try to go into some ranks go into some scrims figure that out and yeah that's my criticism for them and I would say I would have to agree with that. The biggest criticism definitely wasn't in personal player skill or operator choice, in my opinion. It was pretty, or it was by the looks of it as a commentator in the communications part of it. We were just seeing a lot of things happen where if we were, where if communication was a little bit better, they probably wouldn't have been issues in the first place. 100%. And I, I think I've said everything that I need to say to actually mm -hmm. end this off. So if you have any more points you want to add on to. Uh, I would just like to say to all our viewers, I would like all of you to have a wonderful day or the wonderful rest of your day. I have been the letter H, and this has been my fellow commentator, Caro, or Caro. Caro. <laughs> and thank you for watching first round of week seven of Butler versus CMU2. We are going to be seeing CMU1 in the second round.
What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it.